Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Living in Canada. In today's video I want to do a review of the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast in Niagara Falls and this video will be useful to all those of you who are planning to make a short trip or a longer trip to Niagara Falls and are looking for a comfortable nice pleasant, quiet place to stay that is also very affordable at the same time. And by the way, if you are looking for something that is a bit more luxurious, I also made a review on the JW Marriott Falls View Hotel in Niagara Falls as well, which you can check out here. You can click on the link above here. But again, if you're looking for something that is more budget friendly, then the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast will be perfect for you. Today, I want to talk about um, the the rating of this place, the room and amenities, breakfast, hospitality, also the fact that they lend us some bikes for free to use, uh, the price of course very uh, important and also some special things about this place and in the end overall how I liked it, whether I thought it was worth it and if I recommend it or not. So let's get right into it. Let's first talk about the location. That is one of the most important things when uh, you're looking for a hotel, you want it to be close to the sightseeing places, to uh, food shops shopping and so on. So the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast is situated very strategically. It's located on Simcoe Street. It's a bit in the north but it only uh, takes about uh, 20 minutes to walk uh, to downtown and to get to the falls perhaps around 25 minutes. A very a nice and leisurely walk and you can look at the fabulous scenery while doing that while strolling and if you ride a bike then it will only take you around seven minutes and it's also a very very beautiful trail and if you have a car and if you drive it's only four minutes so it's very close to sightseeing places to lot uh, to lots of great restaurants and so on location wise there is um, no problem at all on the contrary if you look at the street here where it's situated it's a very quiet and pleasant neighborhood it doesn't feel touristy at all and that is one of the things that i really appreciate about this place so maybe let's just start by doing a quick tour through the house and through the rooms so this is what the house looks from the front it's actually a, a very old victorian style house and here you see the name of the the bed and breakfast is the blue gables bed and breakfast um yeah and we go up the stairs here and here's the entrance and right here at the entrance you can see that they advertise their place as being one of the top places to stay at. Here on the uh, right it has a trip advisor um, award, a recommended a certificate of excellence. Below that there's an award from booking.com. In 2015 they actually got a 9.4 rating from booking.com and that is also by the way the reason why one of the reasons that I decided to give this place a try. When you stay here you obviously you get your own key so you get in through the front door and here you get into the I'm not sure what this is called this is like a parlor I think. If any of you watching right now know more about houses then leave a comment down below and tell me what this room is called. So it's basically this room at the front of the house where you enter and um, I think that before the pandemic uh, breakfast used to be served here but that was not the case when I um, when I stayed there. We had breakfast in the main dining room but this is basically a place where you can just hang out on your own. You can have some, some coffee here or, and just relax or, or even do some work. So I found this to be a very nice corner. And by the way, the whole house only has, I think four rooms in total. So there, it, it will always be very quiet because there are not many guests at any point in time. And then we walk through the, I think it's called foyer here. Uh, if you go straight, that is the room that I booked. It's called the Victorian room. And if you go to the left, it's the dining room and upstairs are all the other rooms. So this is one thing you want to keep in mind when you choose the room, whether you want the room, a room on the ground floor or upstairs. The room on the ground floor is called the Victorian room and the others are all located upstairs. When you go into the room, um, your the bed is located at the far end of the room and in between that there are some chairs Unfortunately, there is not a, there is no sofa here. It would be nice to have a sofa in front of the TV, but 
that's no problem at all. So we have the chairs here and we have the TV in front and yeah, you have everything in the room that you would expect to have in any kind of uh, inn, B&B or hotel. You have uh, your glasses, you have tissues, you have clothes hangers, you have um, entertainment. And by the way, um, they don't have Netflix or cable, so they just have regular local TV. Um, although I did, we did get a chance to watch watch some of the 80s or 90s X Files, which was quite an experience because that was such a long time ago and it was such a great series. But anyways, if you're looking for a place where they have Netflix, Disney Plus, and so on, then I'm sorry, this is not the right place for you. So for us, it worked out really well because this was exactly what we were looking for. We were looking for a very relaxed, quiet getaway and we wanted to get away from all the social media, the entertainment and so on. So it worked out perfectly. So let's go to the um, bedroom or the bed first. So this is um, the bed over here. I found it to be very comfortable and very clean um very pleasant but i read in the comments and i must agree that um the bed tended to like sink in a bit in the middle but for me personally it wasn't that big of an issue so here you have a small desk where yeah you can do some work read write or do your makeup or whatever and what i love about this room is also that it has its own little balcony but at the time when we stayed here the weather was actually still around zero degrees and it was raining a lot so unfortunately we couldn't really make use of this balcony but i could imagine that if you stayed at this place now in the spring in the summer this would be a really perfect add-on to have just being able to sit out there in the mornings and soak in the sun that's just awesome so yeah one thing that i have to note about this place is although it's uh, quite old um, it's it's decorated with a lot of thought there's a lot of detail and it's also very clean so let's go over to the bathroom let's go in here here's the sink you have your towels your soap and your hair dryer um, and again the bathroom was spotless it was spotless it was so clean and I felt so comfortable here yeah so I would say that there's not that much privacy within the room but you might not really need that if you're traveling with your spouse and here's the shower again the shower is super super squeaky clean and spotless the, the water pressure was good and you have your soap and your shampoo here although i always like to bring my own on trips and here's the reverse view from the bathroom into the room this is i think the largest room in the house um, and that is the reason why we chose this one because we just wanted to have some more space. Some of the other rooms were really nice but they just felt a bit more stuffy and I fortunately got a chance to take a look at the other rooms and we're going to take a look at them. So now let's go upstairs where the other uh, rooms are situated. Let's go up the stairs and Right at the edge of the stairs, you'll see that there's this small pantry here. The guests, whether you're staying upstairs or downstairs, you're free to use this area. There's a microwave, there's um, uh, a fridge, there's a dispenser, a water dispenser, a water dispenser, coffee maker, toaster, and so on. We didn't really use this place except for when we bought a few beers, we cooled them here in the fridge. This is one of the rooms upstairs, it's called Twilight. We originally wanted to take this room, but as you can see, it's just very small. But again, it's really, really nice. And here you have the TV directly in front of the bed. And this sliding door here, at first I thought that this was the closet, but it turned out that the bathroom is actually behind that door, which we'll get to in a second. So I love the furniture in this room. It's it's old but it's really nice and again it's super super clean so if you're also a clean freak that is something that you will appreciate and this is the bathroom i think this was newly renovated it looks really really new and clean so overall this is a very nice room and if i were just staying in niagara falls for one night i would definitely consider staying here but since we stayed for a couple of days 
uh, it was nice to have more space and that is why we picked the Victorian room. So if we go on, if we walk through the corridor here, we have the California room. This room is, I think it might be the same size as the Victorian room, but the ceiling is very low because yeah, it's upstairs. So here you kind of have a sort of a division between your bed, which is here and um, the sofa or seating area on this other side. And <laughs> what's nice here is that you have this little bar here. So if there are several of you staying in this room, then yeah, a few people could, two people could sit at the bar while you're having some drinks. And this is the bathroom. So the bathroom here looks a bit older, but still it's very clean. And also the advantage here is that there's a bathtub in case you want to go for a soap. There was actually another room, but since somebody was staying there, I could not peek into the room, but you might be able to see some of the pictures on booking.com. Okay, that was upstairs. Now let's go downstairs again and look at the dining room. And that's also where in a minute I'll talk to you about breakfast, which is included by the way, it's free. So if we walk downstairs again, look at this beautiful dining room. Look at all the details. The owner has really put in a lot of thought in decorating this place. And again, of course, it's a matter of taste, but I think it was really a unique experience staying at this kind of place because it's, it's not the regular hotel that you would normally stay at. It has this fireplace, which I think is not in use. So this is where every morning we would have breakfast. And breakfast, by the way, is served directly by the owner. Uh, this place is owned by a couple, husband and wife, and both of them are really so kind. They're very generous and friendly. Let's talk about breakfast. So the great thing is that breakfast is free and that is what makes it such a great deal. So breakfast is served at 9 a.m. every morning and it's not a buffet. It might be because of COVID, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, breakfast is served on individual plates and brought to you one by one. So it feels as though you're being served a course menu. So here you can see what we got for breakfast. Um, there were always some snacks served, like these little pastries and cookies, but because on the first day I said that I don't really eat that many sweets in the morning, the host actually switched it out and gave us some pistachio nuts, which was really, really nice of her. So they're really being flexible with it. And here you get some juice. We got apple juice on the first day and I think orange juice on the first day. So I think that's something that you can request. You can choose if you want to have coffee or tea here and you get milk in this little milk jug here. And we also got yogurt, which was very tasty. And uh, the host cut small pieces of food, very nicely done into the yogurt. So that was served first. And yeah, and after that came sort of the main course of breakfast, which is this plate. And here again, it's different every day. This is what we got on one of the days we stayed there. We got plenty of fruit. Um, we got some uh, toast, um, French toast, I think with maple syrup and also some sausages and, and a fried egg. Um, yeah, that was on the first day. And um, just to let you guys know, uh, breakfast takes a long time because uh, the owner really cooks everything fresh, which is a great thing and things get served one by one. So for those of you who are in a rush in the morning, this might not be the best model and you might need to discuss with the host uh, if there can be any flexibility around that. But for us, it worked perfectly because for us, this was a leisurely getaway. We wanted to have a relaxed holiday and we really wanted to take our time enjoying the breakfast. So for us, it wasn't a problem at all. So during our stay, our host shared with us uh, this book about bed and breakfast places in Ontario, but I'll get to that in a second. Before I forget, let's just get through all the other items that I promised to talk about. So we talked about room and amenities, um, breakfast, okay, hospitality and bikes. So hospitality, um, again, I can only say great things about the owners and the host. They are such lovely and such kind and helpful people. So whatever you need, just talk to them and I'm pretty sure that they'll help you out and assist you. One of the really great things that I appreciated was that 
they lent us two bikes for free so we didn't have to pay anything and because um, on the first day no one else was staying there we got to use the bike for the whole first day and also the second and third day because the other guests had their cars with them so that was really really enjoyable to be able to ride the bikes from the blue gables bed and breakfast to downtown to niagara falls it was just a very very different experience than taking the bus or simply just walking. Uh, the owners now said that the old owners used to charge their guests for the bikes around 30 or 40 dollars per day for a bike which is rather on the expensive side. I'm not sure that I would have rented any bikes if I had to pay for it. So it was really a nice gesture of them to um, let us use the bikes for free. Now let's get to the pricing. This is super important. As I said, the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast is a very, very budget-friendly option. And let's take a look at the booking.com website where I booked the place. Um, so here I plugged in the dates May 25th to May 26th, which is just one day for two adults. And here you can see the different rooms. For example, here at the top, you can see the queen suite here and uh, it's reduced from $100 originally to $95 plus $13 taxes and charges. So it's a very, very good deal. In total, you only pay $108 including breakfast and possibly including free bikes. And by the way, about the free bikes, if you want to borrow them, make sure that at the time that you're booking, making your booking, talk to the host and ask them whether the bikes are available and if they could reserve the bikes for you. So this room um, just now, this was the queen suite um, on the second floor upstairs, the, the smaller room, um, but they cost more or less the same. The room that we got, the Victorian room, was the suite with balcony. And now it's listed at $109 plus $15 taxes and charges. So now I want to tell you about what makes this place so special and different from the other places and why it might be really worth experiencing this place. So as I told you before, the host uh, lent us this Ontario Bed and Breakfast book which listed all the various bed and breakfasts in Ontario. So on the first day in the afternoon, I sat in the front room here. I'm not really sure again what this kind of room is called, like a sitting room or so. And interestingly, the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast is listed in this book. So it seems that this bed and breakfast had been a rather well-known place. And according to this book, this uh, Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast had actually existed for over a hundred years. So back then, of course, it was much cheaper. You might be able to see the old prices through these Tip X layers here. Welcome to Blue Gables, a Victorian home nestled on a quiet tree-lined street within walking distance of the falls. We are close enough to hear the roar of the falls from your breakfast table, but away from the hustle and bustle of River Road. This traditional home has both the character and warmth of the past. That's the perfect way to describe it. A full breakfast is served by your host in the enclosed sun porch. Okay, it's called a sun porch or in the formal dining room. That is where you saw the breakfast earlier. Along with the splendor of the falls, there are tours, museums, numerous parks, historic sites, golf courses, winery shops, um, and restaurants that guests can enjoy. We are also in walking distance of Casino Niagara. So in summary, if you stay at the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast, not only will you be saving a lot of money and having a very pleasant stay, but you also have the chance to visit some of the historic sites in Niagara Falls. And by the way, let's just briefly go back to the ranking of this place. So if we look at booking.com, the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast has a rating of 9.5, which is exceptional. And the location rating is 9.4. And if you look at the breakdown, you can have a better idea of how different things are rated. For example, cleanliness is rated 9.7, which is like nearly perfect and I can attest to that that is actually true it is actually super clean if we look at TripAdvisor the Blue Gables Bed and Breakfast is ranked 7 of 45 BNBs in Niagara Falls but if I actually click on BNBs and Inns in Niagara Falls actually it's listed as number one it has a full rating of five dots five stars whatever it is and it has 228 reviews so it's a perfect score
By the way guys, if you're currently living in Toronto and you're wondering how to get to Niagara, then you can check out one of my other videos I made earlier on how you can take the GO Transit to Niagara. And in the coming weeks, I will be also releasing more videos on um, traveling in Niagara Falls, places to eat, what to do, and so on. So if that's something that interests you, make sure that you subscribe and also don't forget to hit the notification bells so that YouTube will notify you when there are new videos for me and by the way guys this channel living in canada is not specifically about niagara falls on this channel i make videos related to living working traveling and studying here in canada i have recently immigrated to canada and my goal here is just to share my daily experiences and share tips on daily life here in canada that might be useful to any of you who are also planning to move over here or to travel here so I hope this was useful, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that you have an awesome stay in Niagara Falls if you plan to go there. And I'll see you again next time.